the Overtopia YouTube channel. Now if you're watching this, you probably saw what the video is about. This video is going to be about study skills. And you might want to say to me, I don't care about study skills because I don't care about studying. Well, I have something to say to you. If you don't care about studying, then you're probably not going to care about studying when you're in high school, which means you might not get good grades, which means when you go to college, which hopefully you want to go to college, you won't get good grades when you're in college because in college you don't have mommy and daddy to follow you around and make sure you're studying. Your professors also aren't going to ask you if you're studying or not. And when you take your tests in college, your professors will not give them to you to take over. They will not do that. They will give you your grade. And another thing about college, when you are in college, typically you only have like five or six major grades for the whole year. So one bad grade in college can really bring your grade down for the whole semester. So it's best now, even though you're in sixth grade, to start forming those work habits and those study habits now so that when you get to college, you're not all of a sudden trying to come up with how to study and how to do your best and all those things. So. To begin, I have three P words that I'm going to tell you will help you with studying. First P is for planner. Use your planner. Write in your agenda. Sometimes your teachers will tell you to write in your agenda and they'll tell you what to write in there. Sometimes they won't tell you, but it will be on their board. So try to use your planner or your agenda, whatever you want to call it. Try to use that every day. It should be like your BFF. Okay. The second P word is partner. Try to find a partner to help you study, whether that is a friend that you trust, that you trust will keep you on track, um, whether your partner is a friend, whether your partner is your parent, parent, um, it doesn't matter really who your partner is, but somebody that you can say, hey, here's my study guide, can you quiz me? Or, hey, here's a blank map, can you look at this one and tell me, you know, as I point to the thing and name it, can you tell me if I'm pointing to and naming the right thing or if I'm close or whatever. So have a partner that will at least just be there to help you and to keep you on track. If you have a partner that's not going to keep you on track, they're not going to help you. So just try to stay away from them. Um, the third P word is priority. You need to make studying a priority. And again, I know that sounds lame. You probably think that I'm crazy, and I am a little bit crazy. But if you don't make studying a priority, again, it's never going to just all of a sudden get easy for you. So it's best if you try now and just do your best to kind of work on it a little bit, study a little more every day, and eventually it's going to be easier for you to do. And it won't um, take so much time for you to study for things as it maybe it once did. So... Okay, now, along with priority, I want to say um, a few things. Okay, and I'll try to go fast, but not too fast. The first thing, the, when you study, try not to study for too long. If you sit and try to study for like more than 20 or 30 minutes at a time, you're going to get burnt out and you're going to get tired and you're just want to, you're going to want to quit. Okay, but if you have a big test that you need to study for, maybe take like 20 minutes, 15 minutes, study, like, try to focus really hard, study really hard for 15 minutes, and then go take a little break. Don't take a 30 minute to an hour long break. Take, like, a 10 minute break, maybe a 15 minute break, a little snack time, and then come back and study again, okay? Studies have shown, and I'm not naming any studies, but studies have shown that if you try to take little breaks, you're going to be more effective. Also, studies have shown that if you try to study something at different points in time, like not all at once, but you kind of break it up and maybe you revisit it every day instead of like try to cram everything in in an hour, you maybe spread that hour out over like three days. It's going to get into your long-term memory faster, which means it will stay there. By the time you take the CRCT, it'll still be in your long-term memory. If you try to cram it all in at once, it's going to go into your short-term memory, and then as soon as you take the test, which you might do well on the test, but as soon as you take it, the next day the information is going to be gone, poof, away. Alright, another thing, this is thing two under priority, plan specific times to study. If you're a procrastinator, you might say, I'll study later, and that later never comes. So you might want to say, I'm going to study 
when I get home at 4.30 or at 5 o'clock and I'm going to study for this amount of time. So maybe that will help you to actually stick to your goals, study at a certain time instead of just saying, I'll probably study later and then something comes up and you don't study. So try to plan specific times. Um, oh, do the hardest stuff first, especially with homework. Try to get through the hardest things first because if you do that, then the hardest things are over and you'll think, wow, okay, the hardest part's over. I can do the rest of this, no problem. So try to do the hard stuff first. Four, put your phone and your computer and your Facebook and your Twitter and whatever else, put that stuff away. Because just like adults, if you've got your phone out, if you've got your computer running and you've got Facebook up or who knows what, games, your PS3, okay, put that stuff away because if it's right there and you're trying to focus on studying, it's going to be a way harder to focus. Just adults do this too, okay? If my phone is sitting there and somebody's sending me text messages but I'm trying to focus on my task, I'm not focused, okay? That's just not going to happen. So try to put that away. It might be difficult, but your grades are more important. And you might not believe me. And again, you might think I'm crazy. I don't care. Next, five, reward yourself for studying. I don't know what is good for you. I don't know what will reward you. But like for me, I really don't like going grocery shopping. So when I do it and I'm leaving, like I'm coming out of Publix or whatever, I'll stop at the vending machine and get myself a Coca-Cola Classic. I just love a Coke, right? So I'll say, okay, I'm almost done grocery shopping, which I don't like to do, but I have to do it because I'm adult. I'm an adult. And I'll say, but it's okay, because I'm about to have a Coca-Cola classic, right? Okay? And I'm not promoting Coca-Cola. I'm just saying, that works for me. If something else works for you, like, you know, you want to play your video games, okay, you can get... get with your parents and say, if I study for 30 minutes to an hour today, can I play the video game system for 30 minutes to an hour? You know, I don't know. Make up a deal with them if they'll go with that. Um, or, I don't know. Whatever will work for you. Try to do that. Um, second to last thing. Okay, number six. Get comfy. But not too comfy. If you're in a comfortable studying environment, you're going to be more likely to stick to it. And then finally, just do it already. Just get it done. Quit procrastinating. Make it happen. I know you don't really believe me right now, but your grades are important. Okay, try to make time for it. But then go beyond trying. Just do it, okay? Because like a lot of things in life, it's not going to get done unless you do it. So just do it. Remember, planner, partner, priority. All right, and you'll be great. Have a good day.